Welcome back to your daily dose. Got BJ here. Got Susan here. We're talking the day one program and our new offering of the film Deadpool. And the idea, uh, again, this campaign that Acadia Pharmaceuticals is running with Ryan Reynolds, that there's more to Parkinson's. We're furthering. We're yes, ending that conversation to help get that out there. And this is what the program is. This program is meant to do. BJ mentioned in our first uh, piece discussing this that this film allows people to access the program differently. People who maybe want some snark or a different take on what it is. Uh, Susan mentioned the other side of it, meaning that the fear of maybe this isn't for me because it has elements that could either be traumatic or just not right. So to both of those, let me say, and then open up to you guys, it's true. I don't think this film is for everybody, nor this, this particular realm of the program is for everyone. However, um, I think it's possible that people will see the film differently than they've seen it before. It does something, in my opinion, incredibly well that it walks this line of being an absolute piece of cinematic uh, popcorn. Just go blast in your face, super snark, super funny, violent, all those things. And as BJ mentioned right off the, the, the top, it is a love story. And it, it's a very improbable love story. But if you don't see that, if you don't, you know, feel that or allow for that, yeah, it's going to be difficult. And um, what I'll say within this too is Deadpool faces an unexpected and very difficult diagnosis, which leads the love story awry. And wow. it's cancer in his case, not Parkinson's. However, it's not the type of cancer that can be dealt with uh, like many people's can. His is, is to the point where he is going to die unless he does something extraordinary. And this extraordinary thing changes who he is at his nature, makes him Deadpool, basically, which sets off all sorts of problems. Is that his name? Is Dead, Does Deadpool... Is that his name? So it comes out in the movie because he has a, a snarky friend. The background for Deadpool, uh, he's hes a mercenary. He's a uh, kicked out of the military, a uh, very talented mercenary who now is doing it uh, kind of for sport and for money. Um, and he has a home base of this bar where he has a, a best friend bartender and they have a literal Deadpool who they think is going to die in their friend group oh. first. Oh. This is very dark humor. <laughs> and BJ, as someone from the military, can you address the gallows humor and how this film uses it? Because this this is in your wheelhouse, yeah? Yes. And um, well, as far as the military goes, it's like if someone gets hurt or trips and falls and bonks their head, you know, you, you laugh first, then check on them. You know, it's a, it's a lot of the, the seriousness of what goes on and you hear it from policemen and everything else, everything you're dealing with is so important and so stark and almost in order for you to handle it, you have to add this level of humor for it to be, uh, you almost have to take it with a grain of salt in order to deal with the seriousness of it. And, and the so, states too, right? Yeah, I mean you, you put a 20 year old in charge of a nuclear submarine, you know, that's just ridiculous. And, <laughs> but you get trained over and over and over and drilled over and over and over how to do these things and you're doing it correctly and everything else. But there's something in the brain where you have to learn to deal with this serious situation and you add kind of this dark humor to it. So so can I, I want to take the corollary. Susan, do you see based on that description where this could be a fit for Parkinson's, what BJ said, you have to deal with this serious situation, Parkinson's in this sense, and maybe gallows humor. You, you, I know it's not in your wheelhouse as much, Susan, but you've used gallows humor at times because you've had some dark shit in your life for sure. <laughs> Still do. <laughs> <laughs> I have learned to appreciate gallows humor, as actually, especially hanging around you guys for the last few years, possibly because I wasn't exposed to it much. And it's not that you guys are there a lot, but you've maybe given my me more exposure and raised my awareness in 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 to why and how it works. Um, one of the ways is actually through our 
gains. And when, when you, Robert, in particular, will be demonstrating something that to me is just like outrageously impossible for me to imagine doing, like, you know, opening my mouth as big as possible and getting as close to the camera so you get the look, you know, just like, I can't, ugh, I can't do that. And it works somehow. It, it, we get, I, I learn to be bigger and, and the drama will have more power, more effect and stuff. So it all kind of fits together in that way. And let me say this, as we bring this episode to a close, we'll continue. But Susan, you're a two-time breast cancer survivor. That's very dark stuff. You have had a uh, full mastectomy. Uh, you have had a number of other things beyond that. These are dark, difficult, painful things that even when they're you know past you, you're still dealing with the effects of them because there are ancillary parts of it. So you are more than you know, as we all can be more than we know. And that's where I want to lead off into our next, because Deadpool shows us how he can become more than he thought he could um, in an interesting way. So I'll see you on the next Daily Dose. Okay.